Good morning, church. Can we stand and worship him this morning?
name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Just ask blind Bartimaeus in the New Testament. He heard that Jesus was coming by, and he began to shout out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. They tried to get him to quieten down, but the Bible says he shouted out even louder, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. The Lord heard him, and the Lord healed him. I believe today that if you'll make up in your mind that you're going to call on the name of Jesus, that something can change in your life. Situations can change in your existence. Come on, somebody right now. Just speak the name of Jesus. Just call on the name of Jesus. Those who are watching with us at home, right there, just call on the name of the Lord. Just speak the name of Jesus. There's no name like the name of Jesus. There's no name that is higher than the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the power of your name today, the authority that we have through the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Why don't you just put your hands together right now and let's celebrate the power of Jesus Christ today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Things change. If you need something to change today, it's all through the service. Speak the name of Jesus. Speak the name of Jesus. Amen. We're so glad to have you here. Welcome back to the Life Church. Those of you who are guests, we're especially grateful to have you joining us. Everyone watching online, our guests online. Church family, can we just make everyone feel welcome? Hallelujah. Amen. You can be seated. If you are new to the Life Church, we do want you to know this church has open arms. There's a place for you here, and we're here to serve you as you endeavor to grow closer to God. So please let us know if there's anything we can do for you. Uh, we do want to connect to you, and one of the ways that we do it, we have a virtual connect card. And if you're here in the sanctuary, you can just open your camera app on your phone, direct it to the screen, and it'll uh, lead you to a link. Those watching online, it should be there in the comments. But just uh, give us a little bit of information. That way we can tell you what's going on at the Life Church, keep you informed. Maybe even help you with figuring out what your next step is uh, with getting connected to the church or in your relationship with the Lord. Today is Mission Sunday, and at the third Sunday of every month, we remind our church family about our missions giving. We, we believe in uh, spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ, not just throughout North Dallas, but around the world. And so we partner with almost 40 missionaries to help do that. And can I tell you that over the last eight months, our missionaries have not been on vacation. Missionaries weren't called back home, but they're still on the front lines. They're still out there in their field of labor. They're still working to spread the good news about Jesus Christ. And you know what? Even though we've had challenges during this time, COVID has challenged some of our missionaries to do things they hadn't done before. Maybe those that didn't have a strong uh, online presence uh, have now had to do that. And now they're reaching people that they wouldn't have reached before. And once COVID's all over and done with, they're going to be more effective. They're going to be reaching more people in person as well as online. And your giving helps make that possible. They were able to stay on the field even through all of this because there's faithful people like you all throughout North America who are giving and supporting them. So continue, continue to do so and be faithful today. If you want to give uh, online or through the Church Center app in the drop down menu, just select missions. It's one of the one of the fields there. Just select missions and anything you give will go out of this church and be a blessing to missionaries around the world. Uh, we've been talking about it the last week or so, week and a half or so, but just let me remind you what our service schedule is going to be for the balance of the year. We've decided we're just going to do our best to simplify things, learn the lessons that we need to, need to learn, and, and move forward. And so we're going to have Sunday services, 930 and 1130. Kids Life is going to be offered during both of those. Our Kids Life team are doing a fantastic job. The kids are doing good. Uh, they're, they're having to wear masks at school and understand social distancing. If they can do it at school, they can do it here. 
as well. If you're a parent and you have kids and maybe you're not sending your kids to school and you want to uh, maybe not send them to Kids Life, we respect that as well. You're welcome to bring them right on into the sanctuary with you and they can sit with you and worship with you right here in the sanctuary. Then on Wednesday nights, we're doing Bible study Wednesday nights as well as Lifeline Youth and Kids Life. And uh, we're going to keep that going. Once again, our young people are doing great uh, with this as well. And then we are a praying church. We put prayer as a prime priority uh, in in this church. So our Monday night prayer meeting is going to carry on 6.30 tomorrow night. We are going to be tweaking some things and just uh, some of our interactions as well as how we dismiss And we're going to kind of handle Monday nights kind of like we handle Sunday and Wednesday. So just so you know, and those of you watching at home that who maybe aren't comfortable enough to be back today, we want you to know we are changing some things, doing everything that we can to keep people safe. And let me just remind you of our precautions while you're here today. Just keep your distance from those that maybe aren't family members. Wear your mask. Uh, If you want to take it off while you're at your seat, that's fine. But if you're going to get up and move about, and especially at dismissal, maybe consider putting that mask back on. And then we're just asking for no congregating. And I know it's hard. We we like to see each other and and, and to talk and to fellowship. But when it comes time for dismissal, that we would just kind of move on out as your section is dismissed and not congregating. Because if we do good for the first, you know, Uh, three quarters of service but then blow it at the end of service then that that's not really helping us and so help us with not congregating at the conclusion of service somebody say amen amen we are thrilled to have brother greg albritton back with us today he's in the office catching his breath from the first service he'll be here a few minutes in, in a few minutes but he joined us also when we went online only uh, back at the beginning of the, the pandemic, he joined us and ministered greatly earlier in this year and has really become a great friend of the Life Church, has a special connection with our church. And I am, I am just grateful that we get to have him back today. He's going to be ministering the word of the Lord to you. He's my friend. Uh, he, he's a man of God, and he is a gift to the kingdom of God. You will be blessed by his ministry today. Why don't you stand right now? Pastor Matt is coming to lead us in prayer. In the book of John, Jesus says, abide in me and I will abide in you. Look at somebody and say abide. That word abide, when we look at the word of God, is referring to our strength, is referring to our source of hope, is referring to our comfort, is referring to life. When we abide in him, he will abide in us. So if you walked in here today and you need strength, Maybe you're weary, your head's been down, and you need God to lift you today. You can abide in him. Somebody say amen. If you need whatever it is, sickness in your body, if you need God to help you with your faith, maybe you've been dealing with fear, just abide in him. Somebody say abide. Why don't we lift our hands right now, and I want you to join me as we begin to pray in the name of Jesus. God, we lift our eyes to you. We turn our attention to you, Jesus. We want you, God, to fill this place, fill this house, fill our hearts, God. I pray that you will bring about transformation in every life in this room, in every life watching online, God. We give every need to you, Lord, and we trust you right now, God, as you open up the windows of heaven and pour out your spirit, pour out your blessing over every life in the name of Jesus. Why don't you worship with us? You're welcome in our hearts. Come and have your way. Oh God, meet us face to face. All consuming fire, move without restraint.
worship your throne amazed by who you are your presence makes us whole
God, church, he's in this place this morning. He is in this place this morning, ready to meet every need that you have. If we just wait on him, if you feel comfortable enough, why don't you raise your hands? Oh, he's in this place. If you reach out and grab him, he's there. He's ready and willing to serve you, to be your king. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus, we praise you this morning, oh God. Heaven's angels all around. My delight is found in knowing that you wear the victor's crown. You're my help and my defender. You're my savior and my friend. In your grace I live and breathe to worship you. At the mention of your greatness, in your name I will bow down. In your presence, fear is silent, for you wear the victor's crown. Let your glory fill this temple, let your power overflow. By your grace, I live and breathe to worship you. Hallelujah. You have all. 
Hallelujah, let's worship our King right now. He is victorious. You and I can be victorious. He overcame. You and I can overcome. We honor you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, you're not just the King of Kings, you're my King. Overcomer, you're my overcomer. By your grace, we can overcome and be victorious in our lives. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, dear Jesus. Thank you, dear Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so glad I get to come to a church where we can feel the real, palpable, present presence of God. Amen. I'm so glad we get to have this interaction with our King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I've been calling church the meeting place in my own mind. It's the place where heaven meets earth, where God meets humanity. This is, this is the interaction. In the Old Testament, the tabernacle, it was, it was called the place, the tent of meeting. It was, this is the spot. I know God talks to us in other places, but this is the place where you show up and he shows up and beautiful things happen. I'm, I'm thankful that not just you and I come to church, but God comes to church. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you again, praise and worship team, leading us into God's presence. Amen. And drummer, I just got to say something on that last part where you got to do all that. That's fun. That's got to be fun, huh? No, that was cool. That was good, man. That was, thank you. Thank you all for leading us into the presence of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Good to be with the Life Church again. Last year we were with y'all live about this time last year. Has anything gone on since that t last year? But it's time. And, uh, and then we were able to be with y'all virtually and had a wonderful, wonderful time. I tell you what, that virtual stuff kind of spoiled me. I mean, that's the only time I could, uh, sometimes it was live and sometimes uh, pre-record. And, uh, and then I get to sit home in my Under Armour's on the couch and watch church and be shouting. And, and, and I'm the one preaching. That was pretty cool. But uh, just great to be with you all. A moment ago, I was about to step in, and Pastor was saying some really kind things about me right when I grabbed the door handle. And I'm like, wait, I can't come in just yet. That wouldn't look good. I'd be like, hey, that's me he's talking about. But thank you for those kind words. I do feel a strong Holy Ghost connection and just... I never take it for granted. It's a privilege to stand here and to be a part of what God's doing in, in Dallas and in the Life Church. It's a great privilege, a great honor to, to, to be a vessel for God. And I love the, the gifts of the Spirit. There's nine of them and there's variety. The five-fold ministry, there's variety. But it all works together for God's purpose. And I love layering with ministry to help God's work get done. Amen. So thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to be here. Amen. I see uh, Chad and Callie Guitro here today. And I, I'll probably start crying, but I don't think I've ever wanted to hold a baby more in my life beside my own. What a handsome young man, James Wynn. We waited a long time for that little fella. And wow, 
Wow, just a handsome young man. Congratulations to my friends and blessings to y'all. Hold him up a little bitty higher so everybody, look how handsome that boy is, everybody. I'm talking. So, Callie, we thank God for you coming in Chad's life, just a beautiful journey. And then now look at your family, just so, so blessed. And Chad, I didn't give you warning yesterday, was really busy and fast, even on the drive, making phone calls. But I got you in one story in the message today, okay? So, oh, it's a good one, though. We'll talk later. Um, Let's look at James chapter 5. I want to read verse 13, 14, and 15. Also, to those of you watching online, pray God's blessings to you. Pray the ministry of the Holy Ghost to you. The Canary family may be watching, my dear friends. I, I say hello to you and greet you. But to all that's watching online, I pray anointing comes into your home. I found out one time in a very real way when I was in the hospital in 2017 at a very low point, a second diagnosis, very, very serious. And a friend sat with me during a Sunday night and we watched our home church POA service. My pastor interrupted the service and said, we need to pray for Greg Albritton right now. And people pointed at the camera. I was the recipient. It didn't take 10 seconds, it didn't take five minutes. God's presence is not bound by walls, he's not bound by distance. God came into that room. And that night was a divine shift in my journey and I speak to someone watching, obviously all of you here, but also to those watching that you can have a God moment today. James 5, 13, 14 and 15. Writer said, is any among you afflicted? And that word afflicted means suffering or in trouble. Is any, a one, um, a one, um, is any among you suffering or in trouble? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. I want you to notice the beginning of verse 13 and the beginning of verse 14, a difference. Is any among you suffering or in trouble let him pray. You notice that? Verse 14, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him. The NASB says it like this. Is any among you suffering? Then he must pray. Is any among you sick? then he must call. I just made that signal that shows my age because they say the new thing is like this. But is any among you sick, then he must call for the elders of the church and they are to pray. Let me interpret that. What I like to call the GAV. That's the Gregory Allen version. There are times and circumstances where you and only you are the one that's being called on to pray until something happens. There are other circumstances where you call someone else and say, pray, come on, we got to pray. We need help. We need strength from God. But there are times God is not after them being the ones doing the praying. There's times that we're in circumstances that God's saying the, the goal is for you to be the one that has a breakthrough in prayer. Today, I would like for us to consider that there are some times when God will build us a prayer room. There are times. 
God will build us a prayer room. But today's message is this. I'll build it myself. Thank you. I'll explain that a little later. I'll build it. Would you say that with me? I'll build it myself. Thank you. Lord, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your grace and your strength. I pray your love in this room today. I pray your, your, your ministering spirit is so strong. Touch every life and heart. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless and you may be seated. I was raised in a apostolic Pentecostal church, First Pentecostal Church of Baton Rouge. Our sanctuary was old school, the traditional, longer, more narrow, two sections, one middle aisle. If I reference Chad a time or two, just know he was raised in the same church and in the same youth group, and we were running, running buddies. We we, our, our church had two sections with the center aisle, and our pastor had this conviction, this belief. He was very strong. I don't know if you could call it a doctrine. He, he just felt strong about it, that the young people were supposed to sit on the front two, the first two rows. I'm seeing some nods and some amens already, that the young people were supposed to sit on the first two rows of either side. It even goes further than that. We were a segregated congregation. The young men sat on one side and the young ladies sat on the other. Am I telling the truth, Chad? That was it. Amen. And, and what that brought about was that brought about a lot of a Sunday night crick in the necks to the teenage guys because you had to learn how to worship God and look at the girls at the same time. <laughs> Y'all like that, don't you? All right. <laughs> and, and, and so we, we did some of this during church. That's not, that's not expanded. Not, that's the truth. 100% the truth. And um, there were many times that the, on the guy's side, there might be a, a few, two or three, four. Sometimes the whole front row could be completely empty and two or three maybe on the second row. And then... I remember many times the majority sitting on like the third row or the fourth row, but we were kind of close to the second and the first row. I thought about that later in life. I'm like, well, pastor was pretty slick because even if we thought we were, you know, backing up a little bit, still sitting on the third and fourth row is pretty good at church. And then the ones that were a little more disconnected, maybe not serving the Lord fully or just kind of lukewarm, they, they might be sitting on row five and six. You know, it's like, I mean, in some churches, that's pretty good. But, man, in our youth group, we knew you, you might be backslidden if you're sitting on the sixth row. <laughs> and then there were some that would sit halfway back, maybe even a little further back, that had a wall up a few times in, in their life and in, in, and in their journey with God. I remember those. Uh, I... I was on the younger end of, of the dynamics of, of at that season of time in the church. When I was 15, 16, most of them were 17, 18 in the group that I hung out with. Chad came along, and he still hung out with all of us. And Chad's only, you know, five or six weeks younger than me. I'm just kidding. He's a few years younger than me, but still hung out with that older group. And if I called names, he would know some of the ones I'm referencing. But our church was, was just old time Pentecostal church Sunday mornings were good but Sunday nights were awesome that's just the way it was that's when you had the prayer room was open before church and it was hot and then the choir was going to sing and it was going to be good and and it was just that was our night I don't know I don't even know if we ever invited visitors on Sunday night that's our night and many times God would move during the choir the worship and 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 we would just have a, a shout down or God's presence would move and people would come up front and begin to pray. And then other times, pastor would preach and he, he, he didn't all the time, but he, he could preach some old-fashioned conviction and the coming of the Lord and consecration. And I remember, I remember 
those moments and those times when you couldn't wait for pastor to get to the altar call because you wanted to get in that altar and pray. I, I remember that pool and that tug that would begin. It's just conviction. It's God's love. It's God's grace. When, when that pull that you, it's hard to explain outside of if you felt it, but when that pull begins to come and tears want to start coming to the edge of your eyes and, and you're just like, hurry up. I, I go ahead and make the altar call. I'm, I'm ready now. I, I've decided I never want to lose. I never want to lose that heart. That, that loves when God starts moving, that pull to pray and that pull to pray through. I remember when maybe you felt to get out and the one beside you didn't and, and you had to take that first step and just start crawling over knees to get out, but you were ready. Or other times they broke first and that gave you the courage to get to the altar. But I, I never want to lose. When God begins to make that tug, just to get in his presence and to pray. A few Sundays ago, I felt to cancel a weekend of preaching. I told the pastor we'll have to go later, and I believe it's where I'm going next weekend. We adjusted the schedule because I just felt like I, was, I needed to be home. And it was the second or the third worship song that day, much like today, just the worship team leading us in the presence of the Lord. And I, I turned to my kids and I said, Daddy's got to go up front. I, I never want to lose that, that draw to just when God, whether it's singing or the preaching or God's presence, to just, to just, just I know I pray in my pew and you can pray in your pew and, and I understand that, but that draw to just step out and say, Jesus, here, here I come, here I come, Jesus. I just, I want to be washed again. I want to be refreshed again. I want to be tender. I want to be broken in your presence. I remember some of those Sunday nights and it in inevitably it happens in youth camps and church services and of all ages but it happens a lot with youth where the group that's up front praying all of a sudden one of them will look back and realize oh our four buddies didn't come and somebody's going to feel the burden and they're going to go back and put the hand on the shoulder and say, look, man, I just, God's moving tonight. God's presence is here. And God uses those interactions and those connections. And I remember some of those, the ages, two or three, four years older than me. And some of those Sunday nights, two and three people gathered around them. And there were times they come. I have a few memories of, of some of those coming to the altar and, and praying but I have also memories of, of standing there fighting back the tears, holding on to the back of the pew because God's presence is so strong and through the love of a friend so strong, but their knuckles white because they're squeezing the back of the pew so much and you see their head nod no. Now you got to understand, we, we all went, to church together and Christian school on the same property together. So we were together throughout the week. I don't remember the exact service. I don't remember the setting, but I remember the conversation repeated itself a couple of times. And, and that is a couple of those guys said, I, I didn't want to go to the altar because I, 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 I know in my heart I'm not ready to commit to fully living for God. I'm still working on some issues. And, 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 and somehow I try to comprehend that mentality of, okay, I, I'm not quite ready yet to give it all to God. So I didn't want to go to the altar if I wasn't ready. Uh, I, 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 I get that on, on, on some levels. But what they didn't understand is every time you tell God no, every time his love and grace and strength is moving on your heart, there's a layer that comes. And if you say no another time, then it's another layer, and, and then it's an, another layer. I've decided I'd rather go every time, and if I'm bringing my issues, God will help me work on the issues. And, and if i got some struggles in my life, God will help me work on the struggles. And, and he knows my heart. He knows where I'm at. But I never want want to get in a place of God working in my heart and my life and me saying no. And I'm not here to cast stones. I'm not here to pin roses in either direction, but I, I was the opposite. 
There were seasons of my teenage years. I didn't go straight. I didn't live for God good longer than three weeks. But you know the flip side of that? I never did bad longer than three weeks either. Call me a yo-yo for the kingdom in some of those teenage years. And when I got a little older, I looked back and I thought, man, I was so weak. Man, that was so bad. Man, I can't, because, you, you see, I mean, temptation would come and I'd be, let's go. Hey, yeah. And then God would move in a church service, let's pray. And I look back at that, it's so bad. And then one day God said, Greg, you never, ever, ever said no to my presence. You never, you were weak. You had, you had issues. You had, had things going on, but you never, amen. And instead of looking in hindsight as I got older, as that was a weakness, I look back, oh, God, thank you that something was in this young man's heart. Thank you that something was there that said, I may still have some things going on, but I'm going to go let God work on me today. If you're convicting me, I'm going to pray till I pray through. I want to get in your presence. What happens at Holy Ghost altars, you'll never forget. The Spirit of God that moves on you, I'm a believer, right. you'll never forget. Yeah. You may forget what the evangelist says. I'd like to think you might remember something, but, but I, I've made the mistake of asking my kids, eh, don't, go ask, don't go interviewing people in the church, even at dinner after you just preached. Don't make the mistake of asking, because they may not remember what you talked about. And this is a powerful, beautiful, precious man of God. Amen. Be thankful for your man of God. I bragged on him on the phone yesterday. He's a pure man of God, pure lady of God. And I know he brings a pure word across this pulpit. I know he does. I just, I know he does. Amen. But you may not remember every word he says or every lesson. Or every, it's building you. You may not can remember if I asked you what you ate two Sundays ago, but it's building you. Some more than others. Sorry, I've been working on that. <laughs> you may not remember all of that, but you're never going to forget what you feel here. You're never going to forget. And Chad, this is where I bring in a story about you, something you told me one time that one of the most awesome things you ever told me, and I've never forgotten it. But Chad, raised in Baton Rouge, we were raised there together. It moved on. I don't even remember where you were living, maybe already in the Dallas area, Plano. But at some point in his life, was back in Baton Rouge, probably visiting his mom or family, and went by Old First Church. The building had now been sold. Another church met there. Different faith, different belief. None of the old choir wasn't there. Preacher wasn't there. All of us wasn't there. But Tad was one of those a lot like me. God moved. He was in that altar. Tad is outside just wanting to be on the property of the church. And a man working in the yard, maintenance man or something there. They began to talk. And the gentleman said, well, would you like to go in? Chad said, yes, sir. Chad told me a season of his life, he, he just was, was hungry and, and drawn. He said, Greg, I went up and I stood in that altar and I lifted my hands and I said, Jesus, I want to feel what I felt when I, when I was a teenager. Hey, man, I know it's real. I know it's still there. I know it's all. And, and, and with no preacher, no choir, no, no. Hey, what, what, what happened? That was somebody saying, I'll never forget what I felt right here. And I may be an adult now. I may be an adult now. Am I telling the truth? I may be an adult now, but God, I can't forget when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, when I was a young adult, I got in your presence and, and I, I just can't forget. Can I just tell you nothing, nothing will ever take the place of just a good old fashioned Holy Ghost praying through, Holy Ghost prayer meeting, fresh touch of God, fresh touch of God in your life. Hey man, sometimes all you are is one good prayer meeting away from a shift in your story. Sometimes all you are is one good praying through away, hey man, from things changing in your life. Here's what I've learned. 
My good praying through may not change everything outside those doors, but when something shifts in here, everything's going to be all right. When something shifts in here and here, amen, we're going to make it. Me and Jesus, we're going to make it. Hallelujah. 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 The stresses and the pressures and the stops and the starts of the last few months. Our world and the changes and everything that's going on has hit a lot of people in so many different ways in church, not able to be at church, online church. And I'm just telling some of you, I'm telling you, and God impressed me yesterday driving here. It's not, you're not just preaching to young people, you know. There's some men in this church, you, you just need a good old-fashioned praying through till ever layer's gone, till ever, amen, till ever there's adults in this room, all of us, until ever layer's gone. I don't want any layer between me and God. Hurtful times, hard times, difficult times, they can bring layers. I don't want any layers between me and his presence. Hallelujah. So don't ever doubt the value of a good prayer time, a good praying through in God's presence. Story from the Bible I want us to look at, illustrate. Our point today is found, it's the life of Jonah in the book of Jonah. In Jonah chapter 1 verse 1, the Bible said, The word of the Lord came to Jonah saying, Go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. Now, in that day and age, Nineveh was a very modern city, a great city, and a very wicked city. God didn't tell Jonah, hey, man, I've got an advanced team going in, handing out materials. Got a prayer team going in, going to be walking the city for the next month. Oh, the praise team's going to be there. That'll soften people's heart. God just said, Jonah, you go and start walking through that city. That was a tough assignment. I'm, I'm not going to try to take over. That was a tough assignment and directive from the Lord. And Jonah, the Bible says, he just got real spiritual. Uh, Jonah fled. He paid a fare. He took off on a ship. And one of the gentlemen here this morning came and laid over the altar in the first service and afterwards came up to me and said, Brother Albritton, very similar message is what got me in the altar 40 years ago when I gave my life to God. And he said he still remembered the pastor, the minister preached from this story. And he said the title of the message was Jonah paid the fare to go the wrong way. And I'm like, whoa. And, and that was from 40 years ago. But Jonah paid the fare and began to flee from God's presence he 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 couldn't the, it, the task felt too great now, I know not all of us have been called to Nineveh and not all of us are just turning around and just trying to get on a ship and get out of Dodge and flee but isn't that how it kind of happens when things happen in our life that's too big for us to handle by ourselves or the call the burden the weight seems too great I don't know about you, but I can tell you what my nature is sometimes, my flesh nature, instead of leaning into it and saying, God, I can't do this without your help, my nature begins to back up sometimes and say, oh, this storm is just too big for me. This journey is just too tough. This stress is too great. And instead of leaning this way, I lean this way. And then guess what happens in, in our lives? I start trying to logic, start trying to figure it all out, start trying to process it in my own ways. His ways are higher than our ways. There's sometimes Times I'm not going to get it this way, and I'm not going to get it all, and, and, and I, I, I flee or I run or I try to figure it out. There, there are times the only thing that's going to work, Jonah, you're going to have to dive in. You're going to have to dive into a prayer meeting and a breakthrough that you haven't yet had from God. God's put a tough assignment on you, but he's going to give you the power to get it done. 
And some of you may feel like God's put a tough assignment on you, but I speak faith to you. He's going to give you the anointing to get it done. It's just going to take some Holy Ghost praying to lock in to what God wants to do. So he fled. He tried to run from God. Verse 4, but the Lord sent out a great wind. Remember, Jonah's running. He's paid a ship fare. He's going to outrun God, right? Wrong. God sends a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest so that the ship was like to be broken. Can I put this in my words? This storm was God. God was beginning a construction project, and he's building Jonah a prayer room. And he's saying, look, if you just lean on me in prayer, we could get this done. Jonah starts fleeing. God says, I'll start work. I'll stir some things up, and I will lead you into a place where you will desire to pray. Verse 5, the mariners were afraid. And they cried, every man unto his God. Would you notice that? Everybody else on the boat starts praying because when God starts building a prayer room, it's time to pray. Everybody's praying except Jonah. So the Bible says they began to throw things overboard to lighten the ship. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship and he lay, folks, he now he's trying to sleep it off. Do y'all see that? He went to the sides of the ship, and he was fast asleep. And I grin and giggle a little bit, but life gets so heavy that sometimes we run, and other times it comes on as oppression or heaviness or depression. John is just down there sleeping, escaping. Because our nature as humans sometimes is when that's so heavy, we lean and God's saying, I know it's not easy, but if you can just lean on me, if you can just lean on me. I know all of a story is not Jonah, but I got to look you in the eyes and just tell you, just lean on him. He can help you make it. He can help you get it done. And so they're crying out. Jonah's asleep. They wake him up and say, look, man, what's going on? What's happening? Jonah, meanwhile, hadn't prayed yet. He's one good prayer meeting from a breakthrough. He's one good prayer meeting from his life changing. He's one good prayer meeting from Nineveh having revival. But he's doing everything else but what God is leading him to do. Verse 8, their interview, I mean, they, they said, tell us, why is this evil on us? And they're looking at Jonah. What's your occupation? Where would you come from? What's your country? What? I mean, they're, just, they're looking for anything to figure out why this storm. So Jonah says in verse 9, I'm a Hebrew. I fear the Lord, the God of heaven. I want you to notice that phrase right there. He may be running. He may be escaping. He may be sleeping. But somewhere in there, this man's saying, I know who my God is. I, I love him. I fear him. And let me, let me tell you something. It's not just Jonah that knows that. God's up there saying, he's squirming right now, but he loves me, and he fears me, and he's honored me, and before it's over, he's going to get things right. And so they ask in verse 11, well, what should we do? Unto thee that the sea may be calm, for the sea wrought and was tempestuous. And Jonah said, take me up. Cast me into the sea, for I know that for my sake this tempest is upon you. Now, I, I, I kind of struggle with that one. If, if I'm Jonah, I believe at that point when they're looking at me and they're all praying and they're looking at me and they're saying, well, what should we do with you? I believe it's at that moment. I'd say, would y'all give me 15 minutes? I go back downstairs. I'm going to go have me a prayer meeting, and we're going to get this thing worked out. I believe I would ask for 15 minutes. I believe I would, at that point I would say, I'm going to go get a hold of God, and I'm going to go get some things right, and I'll be back. Will y'all give me that? Instead, Jonah just said, 
Just throw me overboard. Maybe he was just saying, throw, throw in the towel. I'm done. Bible says, verse 13, nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring the ship to land, but they could not. You know what that tells me? They're saying, we're going we're gonna to we're gonna try to help you out, dude. But the Bible says the sea wrought and was tempestuous against them. It's like God saying, nah, he ain't prayed yet. They tried to help. Jonah's crying out, it's my fault. They finally asking God to forgive them, throw him overboard, offering sacrifices to God while they're doing it. And they finally cast him into the sea, verse 15. And the sea ceased from her raging. They feared the Lord, offered sacrifices. Verse 17. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish. I want you to notice something. I noticed something a few weeks ago looking in this verses, these verses that I hadn't noticed before. The Lord sent a great wind. The Lord prepared a great fish. God began designing and constructing circumstance that would bring this man to the place of his breakthrough. Please understand, Brother Albritton, are you saying that every bad thing happens in my life? God's trying to build me a prayer room? No. But I am saying there are times that it's not the church's turn to pray. It's not the elder's turn to pray. Somebody hear me. There's times I, 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 you can call whoever you want and they can pray. But there's times saying, Mama, it's your turn to break through for your family and don't stop until you get it. Young person, it's time for you to have a breakthrough and don't stop until you get it. Dad, family member, don't stop until you get something from God. God prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in his prayer room for three days. Y'all see that? He was in the belly of the fish for three days, three nights. Chapter 2, verse 1. Y'all see the next three words? Then, would you say that for me, Pastor? Then, not before, but then Jonah prayed. Can we put the next verse on the screen? I, I, I want you to see a couple things. He cried out. Notice what he said in verse 2. I cried, why? By reason of mine affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me out of the belly of hell cried I. He goes on to say, I, I had seaweed wrapped around my head. I cried. I was in the belly of the ocean with waves crashing over me. And I cried unto God and he heard me. Now, when I was younger, and a preacher would say, I said all that to say this, there were times I will say, well, could have you saved us 30 minutes and just said this? But I tell you the entire Jonah story to tell you that's a beautiful story. And God in his mercy allowed the wind to blow. And God in his mercy allowed the, the, the big fish to come. And God put that man in a place where he prayed until something broke through. And thank God. And if I ever get that stubborn, God, build me a prayer room. Custom design, build me a prayer room. Because I'd rather have to get to that place and get it right than be lost. That's the mercy of God. That's the mercy of God. But I've told you the whole Jonah story to tell you. I don't want God to have to get to that place for me to pray. I don't want God to have to send a storm. I don't want God to have to send a great fish for all Britain to say, okay, okay, I'll, I'll do whatever it takes. Let me get a hold of God. I don't. I don't want God to have to do that. God custom designed and built 
Jonah his own personal prayer room. God did that. God built Jonah a prayer room. But I've decided, I've decided, God, I don't want you to have to build me prayer rooms for me to pray. I don't want you to have to go to those measures for me to get a breakthrough. So I've decided I'll build it myself. Thank you. Amen. Can somebody just say that? I'll build it myself. Thank you. God birthed this message in my heart about a week and a half, two weeks ago. I haven't, this hadn't happened for me in a while as a minister and evangelist. Just right now, it's a busy stretch at a lot of different places. I have a ministry event tomorrow night in my home. Preach at a church in a country church Wednesday night. Preach at a prayer meeting on Friday night. Speak at another church on Saturday night and Sunday morning. It's just been different places. And God birthed this message on me, and right now marks the fifth time in a row that in some form I've preached from this subject. Different titles, different angles. Hadn't had that happen in a while, but last Sunday night, I can't even remember what I titled it, something like, When All You Need Is a Good Praying Through. I don't, I don't remember what I called it, but I, I, I came to the Jonah story. And I made the statement that God custom designed Jonah a prayer room, built it for him. And one of the men in the church came up afterwards and he said, when you said God, country, God understand it's country church. I don't know about Texas. I imagine there's a few, but in Louisiana, you turn at the small town and you go ten more miles, and then there's the parking lot and the church. While this place was called Wallace Ridge, it ain't even a town. It's just called Wallace Ridge. You pull in the parking lot. There's more trucks than cars, two to one, and they have good church. And James, a friend of mine I've gotten to know the last little bit, he came up to me at the end of the service and he said, when you said God custom designed and built him a personal prayer room, he said, it just came all over me. I'll build mine myself, thank you. And I said, you just, if I ever preach this again, you just gave me my title. I'm not going to wait for God to have to go build in me a prayer room. I'm not going to make God have to work extra hard for me to be one that wants to pray through. Uh, 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 uh. I want to be moved when they're singing. I want to be moved when he's preaching. I want to be moved when the presence of God is in the house. Hallelujah. <laughs> Somebody hear the prayer of your pastor right now. Give us a heart for you. Give us a sensitivity, oh God. Uh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. name of Jesus. In the Old Testament, one of God's prophets was staying in a cave and God said, step out of the cave. The Bible said the Lord passed by and a great strong wind shook the mountains, breaking pieces the rocks, but the Lord was not in the wind. Then an earthquake, but the Lord wasn't in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. And that's where God spoke from. And I've often thought, God, you weren't in the windstorm, but you could have been. You weren't in the earthquake, but you could have been. You weren't in the fire, but you could have been. No, you were in the still. And I've told God, I don't want you to have to graduate to a fire or an earthquake or the tornado for all Britain to say, oh, okay, 
I hear you. I want to be able to be driving down the road or be in a church service or be talking to a friend on the phone and God's presence come in and to be able to say, I heard, I received the work of that still because if I don't hear him in the still small voice, he can, he can graduate to the others. I want to be able, that's a tender heart, sweetheart. I want, I want God to be able to move me like that. And I'll, I want to qualify. I know we go through numb times sometimes. Thank you for that tender heart. That's beautiful. God has something for you today. I know we may go through numb times. There may be somebody in here today, you're in one of those dry spots. I call it when God turns the faucets off. He does that sometimes. And we dig and we stretch. All right? But here's, here's my deal with God on that. You can put me through a dry time if you want, but nowhere does it say I have to like it. You've spoiled me to your presence. I just talked to God like that. You've spoiled me to your presence. I may have to go numb, and I'm going to walk by faith sometimes. And if I go numb for a week or two, I'll do it, but I don't have to like it. Hurry up and turn the faucets back on because you've spoiled me to your presence. You've spoiled me to your anointing. You sp I don't want a hard heart. I don't want a hard heart. I want a tender heart that can hear the whisper. Uh, uh, fast forward from being in our teens, now I'm in my 20s. I went through a couple of rough months, fully consecrated to the Lord, got my call to preach. And most of the group, some of them connected to the church, but most of the group I was referencing earlier, they, they walked away from church and walked away from God. There was 8, 10, or 12 of them. They hung out all the time, but they weren't in church. They didn't come to church. Some of them were pretty hard against the church or some of the things. And God put a burden on my heart at one stretch for those and. If I called names, Chad's nodding his head. Good people just walked away from the Lord and allowed layers to layers. And God put them on my heart. I had a three-by-five index card that I carried in my pocket. It was after my call to ministry. I was consecrating to the Lord, but God put them on my heart. And I, I put their names on a card, and I just pray for them. And then there came a time that God just led me, why don't you go visit them one at a time and just show them love and let them know I'm, I love them and that you'd love to see them again and see them at church. And It wasn't anything hard sell or hard push like you're going to, it wasn't any of that, none. But it was, I love you, man, I miss you. I'd love to see you, man, how are things going? Just So I went to the first person that I felt to go see. His name was Mike, good guy. Went to his place of business, and Mike's a fun guy. He's a talker. Man, we had a good visit. But in that visit, I just said, man, I'm going to be visiting some of you guys. And I got you all on my heart, and, and I, I just, just love on them, and, you know, whatever, and, and just love to see you at church. And so a few days later, I went to go see the next guy. And I didn't know that that group talked so much, I guess. It was a big deal, I guess, the young preacher coming to talk to us. So when I called the second guy, he said, I know what you're doing. Mike told me what you're doing. And I said, well, I'd love to come and just talk. He said, well, you're welcome to come. He had a good job, had his own house. He loved to fish, still single. He said, you're welcome to come. We can talk life and stuff. We can shoot the breeze. And he said, but don't be talking about the God stuff and don't, don't talk about the church stuff. Don't be bringing any of that up. I'll ask you to leave because I don't want to talk about that. And I, I say this in all fairness. I did, he wasn't being mean. It's just where he was. It's like, don't bring that up. No, don't, don't talk about that. And otherwise, you're what? So I, I went to his house. We talked about job and fishing. And that was it. Later on, I visited a couple more. I can't remember if I made it through the whole list. Had a unique deal where 
they were waiting on a fireworks show to start on July 4th, and I looked up, and there was all of them, and it was an hour and a half till the fireworks show started, so I got to talk to all of them at one time, one at a time in that group till the fireworks show happened. It's really cool how God will do that when you're praying over stuff. Coincidences right. aren't coincidences. God just. But it was several years, I'd say maybe five, seven, eight years later, I was evangelizing, wasn't even in our area. But I found out a gentleman that I visited at his home that said, no, don't bring any of that up. Just don't do it. Gotten a, an illness that was terminal. The illness began to take his health. And again, I'm off other states just hearing the reports. And he's down to just weeks to live, staying in his parents' home, emaciated in body, no strength. And one night, which ended up just being a few nights before he passed, as I was told, not enough strength to walk in their room, he somehow found the strength to roll out of bed and crawl into his parents' bedroom. And at the foot of the bed, pulling on the bedspread, whispering, Mom, Dad, can y'all pray with me? I want to get right with God. And as it was told to me, God, in his beautiful mercies, met that young man right there, and he, he made things right with God. I heard that. I was told that. He, he made things right with God. And we'll rejoice he wasn't a close friend but an acquaintance, but we'll rejoice. I'll hug his neck in heaven and be grateful that he's there because he's a merciful God, and he made it right with God. He made it right with God. And I'm thankful for that, and I'm grateful for that. But I don't want to have to wait till I'm two days before eternity, looking eternity in the eyes before I say, okay, I, I'm ready. I, I, I just wanted to talk a few things. and No, no, no. But now he's ready to talk to God and talk eternity and pray and make things right. I don't want to have to wait until I'm in a moment like that to decide it's time to pray. It's time to get everything opened up with God. It's time for a freshness and a renewal in my walk in the Holy Ghost. I, I don't... I, 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 I'll build it myself, thank you. I, I'm going to go ahead and build me a prayer room. I'm going to go ahead and respond every time God moves. I'm going to go ahead and open my heart every time God moves. I'm going to go ahead and let those holy tears flow when God is flowing. Ha. Right where you sit, just let, just let that prayer come out right now for a moment. Right where you're at. God, if I have layers, you just said, God, if I have any layers, life has not been easy the last 12 months. Amen. Since all this stuff started in March and the climate, the social climate, the political climate, the economy, all the health issues, it's not been easy. But hard life can try to bring layers to our spirit. I'm not going to let it happen. Lord, just tell him right now, Lord, no layers, no layers, no layers. I want a tender heart to you. I want a tender heart to you, oh God, from the front to the back. That's it. Let those holy tears flow. Let those holy tears flow. Let those holy tears flow. God, I pray a blessing on my friend. So sweet, so tender in your presence. It don't mean we've got every issue worked out. It don't mean you've got every situation figured out. Quite the opposite. Jesus, I don't know where it's all at, but I'm leaning on you, and I'm going to make sure my heart is tender. Make sure my heart is tender in your presence. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Would you stand with me? Would you stand across this house? Ah, uh, in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, dear Jesus. 
God, if I've gotten any layers in my spirit through the pressures, through life, through the journey, Lord, in Jesus' name, I'm going to pray until they're gone. I don't want any layers. No layers. No layers. Of course, mom and dad rolled out of bed. Of course, it was a beautiful prayer time. God, I don't want it to take that. Say, I'll, 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 I'll talk to you. Let it be the still thing. Of you just telling me you love me. You're there. My grandparents were, were country, simple, farmer, trapper, South Louisiana Pentecostals. They loved Jesus so much. Faithful to God, faithful to prayer, faithful to his word. In their elder years, they were going to fly commercial for the first time out of New Orleans. I'm telling you, a praying couple. My, my grandma, oh my goodness. Chad, were you at the house that time I got her to pray over breakfast on a Saturday? I had friends over, and my mom had made us a breakfast on a Saturday. She was good at that. And my grandma was visiting, and right at the last second, I said, Mama, come pray over breakfast, because I knew. She couldn't even pray over breakfast. Her, her tongue started hikamahakamaho or kondio shandai was another phrase you'd hear sometimes. I knew her neck was going to start popping. Now I'm telling the truth. Kondio shandai. I'm going to find out what that means when I get to heaven. They prayed. They prayed. They walked in the Spirit. First time they're ever flying commercials, flight takes off, gets up in the air and hits a flock of some kind of birds and blows an engine out and it's major emergency. Plane is having to circle and land right back in New Orleans. There's fire trucks and all lined up. It's an emergency landing with stuff that could go wrong. A lot like the Jonah story. Everybody on that plane got to praying. Everybody. My papa said a calm and a peace came on them that was so pure. And they, I promise you, I don't have to know anybody else on that plane to tell you, they were the two most praying people on that plane. No offense of anybody else. But they were just sitting there and they said people were screaming, people were crying, people were hollering out, people were praying unashamedly and out loud and somebody turned and because it was a, a little holding pattern to make sure everything was set up before the plane made the landing. I guess enough of the engines were still working, whatever. I mean, it, it was getting things right because the landing was the dangerous part. Aren't you going to pray? And my grandpa said, we, we prayed before we left the house. And Jesus told us everything was going to be all right. Everybody else is losing it and screaming and crying out, hurrying up, trying to get in that place of prayer. But somebody said, I've already built me a prayer room. I already talked to Jesus. Eyes closed, hands lifted across this room. Just let that go. I don't have anything else to add. Just let that prayer move on your heart for a moment right now. You may say, Brother Greg, I prayed through last Sunday. Let it happen again. Uh, you ate last Sunday too. You're going to eat again. Just, just let it happen. There's nothing wrong with it. It's time to crush the lie of the enemy that it's, it's a bad thing to pray through every week. That's a good thing. Let the Spirit move on you right now. Let the Spirit move on you right now. Uh, you may be a guest of, of TLC this morning. Let that, let that tenderness you're feeling work in your heart. Hallelujah. It's may may have been a little while since you've been back at, at church. Come on, let those holy tears flow. Let that
tug in your heart work right now, Jesus. I, I call out on you, Jesus. I cry out to you, Jesus. I'm going to pray until I pray through. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Ah, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Sometimes all you are is one good praying through from a breakthrough in your family. Sometimes all you are is one good prayer meeting away from a shift in your life. Sometimes all you are is one good prayer meeting away. I said, let that prayer come on you right now. We're being careful in practicing social distancing measures, but if you're next to somebody from your own home or somebody you're comfortable doing this with, could you just put your hand on their shoulder and take their hand right now? Amen, amen, if you're comfortable doing so. Don't, don't do that if you're not. Let a prayer rise up right now. Let a prayer rise up right now. I don't wanna ever lose a tenderness to God's presence. I don't wanna ever lose a tenderness to God's presence a moving of the Spirit. If you feel to step out from where you stand, there's room at this altar for several together. Hallelujah. If you want to step out, just step out and come to this front or pray all over this house. There's a beautiful move of God's presence in this room right now. That's it. That's it. Just where you stand, sit, or kneel, just step into God's presence for a while. Be renewed in the Holy Ghost right now. Be refreshed in God's spirit right now. If you get to praying and find there's some layers, do whatever it takes to get those layers broken off. Do whatever it takes to get those layers broken off. In the name of Jesus, God, I pray for the young adults and young people in this room right now. I pray for the men and the families in this room right now. God, move in this house. God, move in this house right now. God, move in this place right now your presence touches. I don't want it to take an earthquake. I don't want it to take the, no, those measures. God, move in our heart today, Jesus. That's it, sir. That's it, young lady. Talk to Jesus right now. That's it, young man. Talk to Jesus right now. God, I pray holy oil from heaven. Strength. Amen. Just like oil comes in a vehicle and, and gives it the strength to operate. Let oil from heaven come in this spirit today. Let there be a tender of uh, Father, that's holy to your sweetheart.
Yes, Jesus, yes, Jesus. We welcome the Neils. Let's talk to Jesus. Let his spirit move on you today. the Lord. I don't want the Lord to have to, I don't want him to have to yell at me. I don't want him to have to scream at me. Hallelujah. I don't want him to have to send the fire. I just want to be sensitive enough to, to recognize his still small voice. Let me tell you something, church. That's something that has to be cultivated. That's something that has to be valued. That's not something that happens on accident. I've shared it several times before. But I remember as a young person, as a teenager, making a commitment to the Lord. God, I don't care what happens in a church service, but when the altar call is given, I'm going. Whether he's preached, whether the pastor preached on tithing or the seven horsemen of the apocalypse, I predetermined I'm going to have a sensitive heart to God. Does that mean that I was always perfect? Does that mean that I always live right? No. Like Brother Albritton said today, but I made up in my mind, he's not going to have to scream at me to get my attention. He's not going to have to yell. He's not going to have to send the fire into my life to get my attention. I want to hear his still, small voice. Why don't you lift your hands one more time and just ask God to restore that sensitivity in your spirit, to restore that tenderness in your heart for his presence. Oh, God. Work in us. Cultivate. Cultivate that, that sensitivity, Lord, in us today. God, that we will always have a place for you. That we will always have a heart for you. A heart and a desire for the things of the kingdom of God. Oh, Lord, we're going to build our own prayer room. But we're not going to wait for you to have to build it for us to get our attention. Lord, but we're going to build our own prayer room. We're going to develop our own prayer life. We're going to cultivate our relationship with you because we want to. We're going to do it of our own will and of our own volition. God, I'm going to fall on the rock and be broken. I'm not going to wait for the rock to fall on me and grind me to powder, but I'm going to fall on the rock today. I'm going to fall on the rock of Christ Jesus today. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Would you just begin to seek him? 
would you just continue to just to, to, to wait in his presence right now? I don't feel like the Lord is finished with us yet. No place, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's nothing quite like the presence of the Lord. There's nothing that really compares to the presence of the Lord. And every single one of us, I'm thankful for Sunday church, but every single one of us have to get to the place where we can enter into the presence of the Lord on our own. We've got to get to the place that we, we don't rely on the praise team and we don't rely on Sister Felicia and the prayer leaders. We've got to get to the place where we can get into the presence of the Lord on our own, by yourself. I'll build my own prayer room. Thank you. I'm thankful for the prayers of the church. I'm thankful for what God does to make it easy on us sometimes or to put us in position sometimes. But we can make up in our minds today, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and do the work. I'm going to build my own prayer room. Aren't you thankful for the word of the Lord today? You appreciate the ministry, Brother Greg Albritton. Why don't we thank the Lord and thank Brother Albritton at the same time? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Those who have been watching at home today, I pray that you took this to heart. Hallelujah. And I pray that this message would extend in our lives beyond the conclusion of this service. Hallelujah. Just don't let our hearts get hardened. It's not a badge of honor to ever wear. Cultivate that sensitivity. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let me remind you as we get ready to go today, if you're not ready to leave, you don't have to leave. We don't have a service for another 45 minutes or Spanish service. Let me remind you today that we're going we're gonna to do our best to, to move on and to not congregate, even the, the praise team. I know y'all have been together a while, but I'm going to ask y'all not to hang around dream teams that you've been working with today. Please don't hang around with your teams as we dismiss. Just go ahead. Um, those of you who are watching online, we are, we're taking steps to keep everyone safe, and we want you to feel comfortable about, about coming back. And we're eliminating some of the smaller events where we weren't able to control them as much, where uh, there was lots of cross exposure uh, several days in a row and hoping to learn the lessons that we need to learn to keep on having church on Sunday and Wednesday. We'll be continuing the mask series. We're all wearing masks right now, and we're doing a series on masks on Wednesday nights. That's going to happen. Lifeline students 
kid's life. We want you to be here. And then prayer tomorrow night at 6.30. Amen. Those that are sitting on this section, we're going to let you go first. If you have kids and kids' life, then you can go out of the doors here on either side of the platform.